Hey Irving Church, I'm Josh, this is Gather Online, and today is Testimony Tuesday. Today's going to be a good day, and let me tell you why. Our very own Martha McConnell is going to be sharing a really awesome testimony with us today. So, strap yourselves in and get ready, because here it comes. Okay, I like to share a lot of different stories, how God uses me. First of all, I want to say good morning, Irving Church. Miss all of you all. Um, I am happy to say and share, not that I'm boasting, that God has blessed Charles and I where we're able to travel a lot. And we do travel a lot around the world. And uh, it's interesting. Throughout my travels, I've met a lot of stars. Like, um, And when I say met, I actually sit and talk with them or say hello and they say hello back. Like Walter Payton was my first person. Uh, years ago, I met Naomi Judge, sat with her at the airport, talked with her. I've met uh, Cicely Tyson, Shirley Lee Raff. Um, I was asking Charles, who was it all had that phrase that says, uh, keep hope alive, Jesse Jackson. I said, I met him, hammer time, I met him and sat, talk, took pictures with him. So it's interesting, but I get a, my biggest thrill out of just meeting everyday people, just sitting, talking with them. And I remember uh, one of my particular um, trips that I had gone on, well, it actually wasn't a trip, it was uh, to a family's baby shower in California. You know, my cousin, Nicole, I love her, and John. And so on my return trip back home, get to the airport, notice that uh, my flight is delayed by two hours. I'm thinking, no, oh, used to it, no big deal, okay? Sit around the terminal, just kind of observing people. Now some come on. The flight has been delayed another three hours. I'm thinking, wow, okay, no big deal. I'm used to it because I travel a lot, okay? So I get up and walk around, give me something to eat, just kind of observe people, you know, and, and just, just being at the terminal. What are you going to do? Just relax and you can't get mad. But, of course, there were a lot of people around me that was fussing and cussing and complaining. And I'm thinking, what are you going to do? You just have to just take it and just deal with it, you know. So then the uh, ticket agent got on and said, oh, we have a flight coming in from Hawaii, but it's three hours out. Okay. So once again, passengers are all upset, going off and talking about how they hate their airline and they're going to sue. And I'm thinking, what are you going to sue for? There's nothing they can do, you know. So, but anyway, so I'm watching all this unfold. Finally, the plane arrives, okay. I'm thinking, oh, good, be ready to go home. Door opens up, passengers coming out. I'm thinking, oh, this can't be good, you know. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay. So come to find out. The, 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 the plane wasn't going to go anywhere because I guess the pilots had their time was allotted for them flying so they didn't have anyone else to fly the plane. I'm thinking, wow, this is great. So people coming off the plane and I noticed this woman in the wheelchair. I'm thinking, oh, okay. I just kind of, I'm just watching everybody get off and, and so I noticed that the uh, lady who was assisting her sat her in one of the seats in the terminal and she looked very upset, you know, and I'm thinking, wow, okay, but people around, around her or trying to calm her down, you know, so I'm thinking, hmm, something sad. Go check on her. I'm like, no, you know, I'm good. I'm just watching everything. And then, you know, how you just push that out of your head. And then the voice came again. Okay, Martha, she's black, you're black, go check on her. <laughs> I'm thinking, what does me being black have to do with being with this lady sitting here, you know? And then it, Third time the voice, it was like louder and like a push, like a jolt. Get over there. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going, I'm going. So I go over there and I sit down beside her. I said, hi, my name is Martha. She said, I'm Leah. And I said, I noticed that you're upset. Was, are you okay? Is anything I can do for you? By this time, I think another passenger had brought us some water. I'm thinking, okay. So she was saying, um, American Airlines just run my once in a lifetime trip to Hawaii. I'm thinking, Hawaii's still going to be there. So, <laughs> you know. Why can't you go late? I'm thinking this to myself. I said, oh, well, you know, you can plan another trip, maybe another day, some a couple of years from now, maybe, you know. And she was like, uh, I don't see that happening. I'm like, hmm, okay. I said, maybe you can go with some friends. I said, no, she said she's going by herself to Hawaii. And I said, oh, well, maybe next time you go with some friends. And she said, I don't see that happening. I'm like, oh, okay. And she said, I'm scheduled to have surgery when I get back home. I'm like, oh. And, and she said, the doctor's giving me 2% to live. I'm thinking, my mind thinking, 2% to live. I said, okay, I'm kind of nosy. <laughs> so 
what kind of surgery are you having when the doctor's only giving you 2% to live? And she says, I have this tumor on my, in my body that has, I can never say this word, metastasized itself on my organs, okay? And she said, they're going to have to take every organ out and cut the tumor off and then put my organs back. I'm thinking, in my mind, I'm screaming. I'm going, girl, that ain't nothing. God got you. I said, he could bring you through, bring you through this stuff with nothing. She was like, her eyes got big, and she was like, do you think God could bring me through? I said, absolutely. I said, the guy I serve, I know could bring you through. But I said, but you got to have faith to know he's going to bring you through this. And she was like, well, maybe I need to quit feeling sorry for myself and, and, and you know, trust, trust God like you say. I said, well, I didn't want to really want to bring up God to you. At first, I said, because I noticed your name was Muhammad. I live Muhammad. She called that's my husband's, my ex-husband's last name. I said, oh, she said, I believe in God. I said, okay, then you can believe that he can bring you through the surgery. And she said, okay, well, if you have faith, I guess I need to have faith. I said, yeah. I said, tell you what, we're going to exchange numbers. I'm going to give you two weeks from your surgery. And I'll call you and check on you. She said, well, you do that? I go, yeah, you know. So, you know, time went by and I called her. And she said, I didn't have the surgery. I said, why not? She said, because she's a really small frame lady. She said, I, I need to gain weight in order to have the surgery. And so she said, I said, okay, I tell you what, once you gain your weight and have your surgery, how much time was that going to be? And she told me, I said, I'll call you back, reach out to you, you know. So she had the surgery, and that was four years ago. She's still here. So um, I stayed with her um, that whole night because our flight wasn't going to leave again until the next day. So I told her I, was, I went and got her ticket information straight now so she can go back home to Ohio. And I said, I stayed with you the whole time because her flight was leaving before mine. So I get you to your gate. You know, and I did. And so we prayed with her. I prayed with her. We prayed together. And then this other lady sitting be, uh, on the other side of us said, she says, I've been listening to you all all night. Can I pray with you guys too? And we, I was like, sure, no problem. So we did. And so the rest is history. Um, by the grace of God, I was able to go to her birthday party this past March the 7th, right before the, all this virus hit. And it was amazing to see how much this lady is loved. They asked me to write an article in the paper about her party, and I did. I wrote a, an article in the paper for her. It's just amazing um, just to, to see how God works. You know, um, I know a lot of times people look at me and they say, she's quiet. But if you're sitting there, I'm going to go say, hey, how you doing? You know, or I'm not afraid to talk to strangers, you know, especially if I feel a good vibe from people. So I just think that's how God uses me. God uses me through a lot of situations, and I give him the glory for using me, a child of his, of the most high king. God is amazing. That's it. <laughs> that's my story. I have a lot of stories I could share about uh, God had that faith in God. Know he's going to bring you through. I know he's. A re I know he has to have a reason for what we're dealing with right now. Uh, we just have to be faithful and be steadfast and lean on him. That's all I can say, and that's my testimony.